What's good everyone, it's Kajani with a guide on how to get the Splendorous Gathering tools for Final Fantasy XIV Patch 6.35. The Splendorous tools are worth getting simply because of the added abilities that they get once they are upgraded. Here are the stats for the Crystalline Fishing Rod. Its ability has a chance to reduce the cost of Powerful Hookset and Precision Hookset by 50%. Anything that saves me GP, even if it is the occasional 25, is something that I won't complain about. You might be saying, Kajani, that ability sounds kind of mid, and you might be right, but the ability on the botanist and miner tool though is way more useful. The ability provides a 20% increase to the chance of activating collector's intuition whenever you are gathering collectibles. This ability should make it easier to farm collectibles since you should be getting more procs of collector's intuition. If you are debating if you should get these tools over an indicator set, well, the only benefit the indicator has over the splendorous tools is that they have better stats because you can overmeld them. Keep in mind that this is most likely the first step in the upgrade process, and the next stage of the splendorous tools should have stats closer or even better than an overmelded indicator tool. And who knows, they may even increase the effectiveness of the current abilities or even add another ability altogether. So overall, I do recommend getting a Splendorous Gathering tool. It's very possible that they will be best in slot with an ability to make gathering life easier. If that's not enough to convince you, the tools look really nice so far. If Glamour is your endgame, that's reason enough to get a Splendorous Gathering tool. To get started, you'll need to purchase a Splendorous tool from Quiana in exchange for 1,500 white scripts. She also sells Select Bait, which is the bait that you'll use for the fishing upgrade quests. If you happen to be low on white scripts, you can also purchase the Select Bait from the market board. On the screen are the breakpoints to receive a gathering bonus. The perception bonus is going to come in handy with gathering the non-collectible items and the GP bonus will be important for both the collectible items and non-collectible items. With that said, make sure your food choice helps you meet at least the GP bonus. I went with the Jenga Curry as it provides a buff to gathering which determines the effectiveness of your collectible job actions as well as providing a respectable buff to GP. If you need a gathering food that helps you meet at least the GP bonus, I believe high quality Yakao Musaka provides the highest increase to GP in the game. Needless to say, you will need high cordials. You can also pick up some rationing manuals if you like to extend your food buffs. I would also recommend that you pick some music or a podcast to help you pass the time as you are gathering or waiting for your GP to refill. Choose whatever you are comfy with and can vibe to because you are in store for a lot of gathering and a lot of fishing. All the materials that you need to gather to upgrade your tool can be found in your gathering log and you will need to use a splendorous tool in order to gather them. The best way to go about this is to focus on gathering the shards and crystals first, then work on the components. Both of those items are hidden items, so whenever you approach a node and they show up, gather them using your yield bonuses. It's best to get them out of the way so then you can focus on the components. And honestly, if you have to wait for more GP to do so, I recommend doing it. You do have the option of using Luck of the Pioneer or Luck of the Mountaineer to reveal these hidden items, but I found that it wasn't necessary. You are better off saving your GP to use on job actions that increase quantity whenever the hidden items do pop up, or collectability while you're collecting the components. For the components, it comes out to a minimum of 60 collectibles for the dedicated tool quest and 70 collectibles for the adaptive tool quest. Not all your components will end up at max collectability, especially if you're under 700 GP. When you're under 700, just shoot for the minimum, then keep it moving. Let's move on to catching the fish that we will use to upgrade the Splendorous Fishing Rod. You can determine the locations for each respective fish by reading their descriptions at the turn encounter, or you can simply check the description of the video. In order to catch the fish, you have to use your Splendorous Rod along with the select bait. Also, don't forget to turn on your collector's glove. 
To maximize the collectability of the fish that we need, we will be using the job action prize catch. Prize catch guarantees that the fish that you do catch is a large size fish. As an added bonus, you'll be gaining stacks of angler's art with each large size fish that is caught, which will be spent on Thaliok's favor. After you catch a fish for the questline, use identical cast right after, then prize catch as this will speed up the process of upgrading your splendorous rod. If you don't have enough GP for both of these job actions, that's fine. Just use prize catch, then wait until you have enough GP to use both of the job actions. We will also be using the job action surface slap on occasion as some of these fish like to perform their own big fish impressions by not showing up after a while so surface slapping one of the more common fish will help speed up the process of catching the fish that we need. I want to point out some things about the fish that we'll be catching. For the Clave Keeper and the Spangled Piroruku, they are the only two fish in their respective fishing nodes with medium tugs. This is going to make it super easy to target them with prize catch. For Platinum Seahorse and Mirror Image, it's slightly harder to identify them. Both of these fish are in fishing nodes with other fish that have light tugs and annoyingly close cast times. For example, with the Platinum Seahorse, you may end end up reeling in a hard candy instead of a platinum seahorse. In the event that this happens, you can just cast again or you have the option to surface slap the hard candy. This is going to make it easier to identify the platinum seahorse on the next cast. So that's all I have for this video on these splendorous gathering tools. Just make sure that you enjoy the grind, take breaks, and of course have fun. I will catch y'all in the next video. Until next time, peace.